I want to take a few minutes to review some of the concepts from Module 1 that are important to remember as you complete all the modules. In Module 1, the focus was on cognitive development and the role that this plays in school readiness. As we consider child development and readiness, there are several important concepts relevant to all the modules. Some concepts I would like to review include brain development, developmentally appropriate practice, school readiness, and early literacy asides. Module 1 discussed the importance of brain development in the early years, including information about the critical age of birth to age 3 when the brain reaches 90% of its adult size. While Module 1 focused on the area of cognitive development, much of the emphasis in the brain development research is on the importance of caring relationships and how these help children develop in all areas of life. Positive interactions that a child has with adults in the environment are crucial to optimal brain development and help build the foundation for all learning and development to take place. As we talk about motor and social-emotional development in this module, you will see the links back to the important concept in Module 1. To explore on your own, take a look at the information on the 0 to 3 website. This has a lot of information and resources to explore about brain development and will help refresh or add to your knowledge in this area. Another important concept to remember when working with young children and their families is the concept of Developmentally Appropriate Practice, or DAP. DAP is based on child development research and reminds us to consider not only the chronological age of the children you are working with, but also their stage of development. It acknowledges individual differences in child development and also considers families and how their values and cultural differences impact their child's development. For those of you that did not complete Module 1 or just want to explore again, I have included a website from the National Association for the Education of Young Children that has in-depth information regarding DAP. NAEYC outlines 12 principles of child development and learning. While all of these are very important, as we go through this module, I have highlighted some that you should pay particular attention to when considering social, emotional, and physical development. Let's first consider that learning and development follow sequences. This is especially important to consider when looking at motor development. Sequence and rate of development are not the same thing. Sequence refers to typical patterns of development. For example, children will crawl, then walk, and then run. When you look at typical development, there is a pattern. If you know about the sequence of development, then you can plan activities and learning experiences that will promote the development of new skills. For example, if you have children who are crawling, then you will want to provide an environment for them to be able to pull up on objects and start practicing standing skills to learn to walk. Another principle is that development and learning proceed at varying rates. This is important to consider when thinking about children at different developmental stages, including working with children with disabilities. Rate looks at a time frame. For instance, one child may walk at 10 months and another at 14 months. There are typical time frames when skills usually develop. The rate looks at this typical time frame and can serve as a red flag for developmental delays. Looking at typical rates of development can help parents and caregivers consider where a child is in their development and consider if there is a need for screening to determine if intervention or added supports are needed. The next principle to consider is that development and learning result from an interaction of maturation and experience. This will be important when we think about motor development. The muscles in the body have to be developed in order to master a skill, and the child also has to be exposed to opportunities in the environment to practice these skills. For example, you can have a group of children working together on an activity to promote small muscle development in the hands. Children will have different levels of maturation, but can still be exposed to the same type of experiences. Children can participate together in cutting activities, with some tearing up paper, some learning to hold and snip with scissors, and some cutting at a proficient level. All of the children get a chance to participate and can develop small muscles and be exposed to the same fine motor activity. Another principle is that children develop best when they have secure relationships. Children need these secure relationships. These relationships impact not only emotional health, but all of a child's development. Children have to feel secure to try new things and explore their environment. One way to help children feel comfortable in a group is to promote fun. 
If you see smiles in your story times with young children, then you are helping to promote secure relationships. This can be promoted by including some nonsense in your interactions with children. Children like to laugh at silly words or ideas, such as dogs flying, anything out of the ordinary. As they laugh together, it helps them feel like they belong to the group. This leads to the last highlighted principle to keep in mind, the importance of play, which is where much of the learning for a child takes place. Exploring the environment is crucial for learning and is promoted through motor development and social emotional security. It is important for caregivers to understand the importance of play. Many of them may be concentrating on school readiness and forgetting about the importance of play to promote this. You can support this important concept by sharing with families and caregivers that children learn by exploring their environment. While playing, children learn how the world works and can learn such concepts as counting shapes and sizes, communication skills, and how to interact with others. Play also promotes curiosity. I have included a link to a website on the National Association for the Education of Young Children. This provides some talking points to use with caregivers and parents to promote the importance of play.